everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole and today we are looking at your pre-construction meeting. So you're building a new home, you've already got everything signed from your paperwork, your county has approved a lot of what you need in order to get started, the hole has been dug. What happens next? Now you have to meet with your builder to go over everything that happens before the construction of that home. If this is something you're interested in, maybe you're building a new home yourself, go ahead, give this video a like, click subscribe. Let's get going. Now, if you're using a builder who has already done all the approvals for everything, maybe the structure's already going up, you might not have a pre-construction meeting yourself. You'll still have a place to meet with your project manager, understand who the superintendent is, and go over some of the features, but that might not be until that pre-drywall meeting. So if you are in that boat, that's okay. You might not have the pre-construction meeting, but always make sure that you're asking whatever questions you have. This is a huge investment. You have spent a lot of time, energy, and money on this. So you wanna make sure that you are as comfortable as possible with what you're getting. Now, if you are somebody who is having that pre-construction meeting, what exactly is this? What can you expect going in? What do you need to be prepared for when you do arrive? So like I said, you are going to meet your project manager. You might meet a couple other people on the team itself. It might be a little bit smaller. So for us, we just had the project manager and our representative from the company. But what this meeting's all about is basically an understanding of expectations, what you need to know going in, what your project manager is doing, what's happening with your timeline, and just really level set what it is you can expect from here on out. Now, this might be just after the hole is dug. You might already have a foundation. They might have already poured slabs. There's a couple of different places where this might actually happen. So it might not necessarily be pre-construction. It's just kind of around that timeline. This will be kind of builder dependent. So for us, this was already after again, the foundation was poured. We had the rough-ins for plumbing and they were just about to start pouring slabs and getting that lumber in. So what happens when you get there? First of all, they will have the blueprints for absolutely everything in your home. They are on these huge sheets of paper and you will go over and through every single one. Now they are really, really difficult to read and understand if you're not familiar with it, but they will go over everything that you need to know. And this is also where you can ask any question that you might have. They'll go over the lot grading. So basically your house has to sit up a certain amount in order for drainage to flow downward. They'll have exactly you know the elevation for everything and where those kind of gradients start to go down. It will have all of your property lines laid out so you'll know exactly where all of those are. You'll obviously get a plat at some point as well, but it does help to kind of see where everything is and it is likely marked by a couple of stakes. If you're still not quite sure, again, the blueprints are a little bit tricky to read, but everything will be marked on your property. They'll go over any easements. So any type of access point that somebody other than you, the homeowner has to your property. That might be electrical lines. It might be an internet box. It might be some type of drainage, which we had in our last house. We had two drains in the back that if the county ever needed to come through, they had the right to do that. They would have had to you know, rip up our fence. And that's something that we would have had to pay for anyway, because it's just going in with that understanding of what is yours and what's kind of yours. On our new property, we do have giant towers going through the back, which is a little unfortunate. Nice that they can't build anything else back there, but that is something that, you know, the county would have access to if they need. It is all the way at the back of the property, which is really nice. And I am hoping that someday we'll have the technology that we don't need those giant towers and they can become small again, which would be fantastic. But in the meantime, we have to understand that again, that is an easement. That is something that somebody else does have access to if they need. They'll also go back over some of your options here, any of your optional layouts, anything that you've changed, your low voltage, your electrical options, all of that. They'll go back over the placement, make sure that what you know, what they know, everything is kind of meeting in the middle. Everybody has an understanding of what's going in where, what's happening, and just to make sure that, again, everybody's on the same page. Maybe there's something you've forgotten about. Maybe they've missed something. Hopefully that's not the case, but it just gets everybody on the same page. Now, while you are going over everything, there might be a couple things that you didn't think about and now you've had a little bit more time and you're trying to see if maybe you can make some changes. Most of the time, unfortunately, this is kind of past the point of no return and no more changes can be made. 
you can certainly ask. Just keep in mind that by the time you get to this point, things have already been ordered, things have been approved. Once it's kind of on the blueprints, it can be very tricky to change anything. This is also where you'll be able to pick out the location of a couple of things. So for example, your air conditioning unit, sometimes they'll have it, you know, you can have it on the right side or the left side, nothing too exciting, but it's still something that you get to kind of visually pick out where you would like that placed. For us, we also are going to be on propane. So it is a huge tank. They advised us as where they think the best location or locations would be. We did get the final say in that. So that was always good to know as well because we've never had you know propane before. So now we know exactly where that location is. It is something that got marked on the blueprints right then and there to be sent off for that county approval. So next we're getting into time frame a little bit. So typically a new build home is going to take somewhere five to six months. This is again, a very general broad rule of thumb. It's not going to work out that way for absolutely everybody, but I'd say for the most part, that's a decent average. Now we are way behind the mark again, so that's a little bit frustrating and sad. But again, if we're looking at that five to six months, we're looking at about two and a half months to your pre-drywall inspection, and then about two and a half months after that to get to that finished product home. So our pre-construction meeting was, I think it was October 11th, I'll double check that date. So we should have been end of November, beginning of December to our pre-drywall meeting. Now it is currently December 28th, so we're a little bit behind the mark there. We did unfortunately get told that obviously it's not gonna happen until after January 1st. And there is a reason for that that I'll get into in just a second. But again, just so you understand a little bit more about what you can expect from a timeline perspective. So if you are at the point where you have your foundation, maybe they're about to start pouring those slabs and then they start to get that lumber in. Once they start framing, you're about a month into that two and a half month general process which means you should be about a month and a half to that pre-drywall meeting. Once your foundation is done, they will need some time to backfill everything. So get all of the dirt that's been pushed out to the sides all the way up against that foundation. You will need some time to pour the slabs and then again to start that framing process. Once all the framing is up and you do have you know, your roof on and the house does start to get wrapped, windows start to get put in, there are a couple of the mechanical trades that need to happen and they do have a very specific sequence. Unfortunately, most of the time, one of them does have to finish or almost finish before the next one can come in and start their work. So that's another kind of timeline, timeframe thing that you'll wanna get worked out at that pre-construction meeting. So for us, this was broken down into three segments. First, you had your HVAC and your air. Second, you'll have your plumbing and gas. And then third, we're looking at electric and low voltage. Now, each of these take about a week. And again, we were told they have to almost be completely finished before that next one can rotate in. Now, unfortunately for us, there was a piece of the HVAC system that they could get most of it done, but there's some type of flex pipe that they cannot get a hold of right now. So we do have to hold off on having our pre-drywall meeting next. Now, luckily we were able to get you know, the plumbing and getting most of the electric done as well while we're waiting on those finishing pieces for the HVAC system. So it's not an exact HVAC must be done completely before the next piece comes in, but there can be a holdup at any point along the way. And with the supply chain issues that we've been having, it's just taking much, much longer than usual. We are hoping that that comes in soon and we can get our pre-drywall done because then it's still another you know, two and a half months from there, if we're lucky at this point. So unfortunately, we are probably looking at, I'm going to just prepare myself for an April delivery right now. But again, everything just keeps pushing and pushing. So get in all your questions that you can keep in close contact with whoever is your point of contact so that you can get these questions answered as time goes on. The county will also have a couple of inspections along the way before they can proceed to that next step. So it might be your piping test. It might be if you have a propane tank, your propane tank placement needs to get approved. Your plumbing groundwork needs to be double checked by them. And then you'll also need that electrical service. Now getting power into the house is kind of that linchpin before you can get to your pre-construction meeting. Typically that means your house is completely done on the outside. So obviously we don't want any type of water or weather getting in once we do have electricity into the house. So for our house, we were told it would take about three to four days to get all of those electrical um, cords pulled into the house. And once those are all done, you're about a week out from your pre-drywall meeting. So 
So if we were in, you know, a more normal time frame and more normal cadence, we would probably be there or have been there already. But again, waiting on that one HVAC piece or pieces, not quite sure how that all works. But once that's done, that should be that last piece that we need before that next step. Now, finally, while you're there and you have that project manager, this is your time to ask those questions. You probably have so, so many, and hopefully you have been in contact with somebody from the actual builder themselves and you've had that kind of flow of information, but now you're in front of the person actually responsible for the building of your home, somebody who's on site on that day-to-day -day basis. So this is a great time to ask those questions if you have them. First thing we wanna know, when will the lumber be delivered? If you don't have that done yet, if you have your foundation, if they're doing you know, the backfilling and they're pouring slabs, when can we expect to see the actual structure start to go up? These are questions that will help you again understand that time frame as to when you can have your pre-construction and then finally that delivery of your home what is the tentative plan what is the time frame obviously there's always you know a little bit of flux even if you are in a more you know steady time it's not something that always goes according to plan so getting that kind of general outline is going to be really helpful with planning you know whether you're renting somewhere if things are in storage just for general peace of mind, what does that time frame look like? If you're going into winter months, when does weather start to be a factor? So here in Northern Virginia, we were told that January is really when weather starts to take effect. Now we're right around the corner from January, but we do have, you know, everything is wrapped, the roof is on, you know, the electrical cords are already pulled into the house. So we know we should be good there. If you're in any stage before that, Again, weather might be an issue. So just get that understanding up front, get that honest conversation started so that you can know what expectations, what realistic expectations you can have going in. Now, speaking of honesty, we also asked you, know, what kind of issues have you had with this particular model? Has everything been delivered on time? What are kind of the main issues you get during the building process? What have people seen? What have people been saying? This is a model that fortunately for us was pretty popular from this builder. So they had built it, I think more than any other model. So they were very familiar with it. They're the most familiar with this model of home, which gave them a little bit more confidence in it. So they did not provide any type of, you know, we're typically having issues with the stairs. We're typically having issues with measurements in the kitchen, anything like that. It was more along the lines of what the supply chain kind of issues were at the time. But that's another great question. What are you having issues getting hold of right now? So for us, we're looking at siding has been a huge issue. Our color has not really had that much of an issue getting a hold of. Some of the homes around us have definitely had trouble getting that color in stock. I think we should be good, so fingers crossed there but siding has been an issue. Appliances is another one. So some people have moved in without all of their appliances. If they've eventually gotten to the point where the only thing missing is a microwave or something like that, maybe they're moving in already. Some people have also had to kind of mix and match. So we purchased a package of appliances and sometimes they don't make that anymore. Sometimes it's just stuck on a ship off the coast and there's not too much you can do about that. You don't know when it's gonna get delivered. So then it's, okay, what else can we get? So maybe it's not going to match exactly. Maybe it's not the same manufacturer, but something else that's close enough just to get you in your home that you've been waiting for. Some flooring has been a bit of an issue. So I believe I've mentioned before that we did have to change the decking color for our covered patio. There's just some things that manufacturers aren't making anymore, or they're just, again, stuck somewhere, who knows where. So it's just difficult to get a hold of. So you might actually need to change out a couple of things and be prepared to make that adjustment. See what other type of follow-ups they offer. So there will always be that kind of one year-ish mark for a new build home. For us, actually, it's going to be 11 months. And we also have a 60-day or two-month kind of check-in. These are also questions you can ask at your pre-drywall, but again, just going in knowing as much as possible and being as prepared as possible will just help you a little bit more with having that understanding of what is going on. What other lingering questions do you have? So we weren't sure if from our covered patio down to the yard, if there were gonna be stairs. Pretty sure there weren't. Stairs get expensive for seemingly no reason in my expert opinion. But are there going to be stairs? The answer to that was no, you would have to build them later. So then it's okay, well, how feasible is that? How easy is it? Are we going to have to spend an arm and a leg just to take off some of these railings? 
Now, fortunately, the way that the patio is being built, it is pretty easy to take off some of that railing to get stairs in. But again, that's just something we wanted to know. How cumbersome will this be to do later if it's not something that's being offered right now? Mentioned appliances a little bit being a bit tricky to find. If you're not getting appliances through them, you'll want to know those dimensions so that you can get the washer and dryer, so you can get your refrigerator, so you're buying things that you know are going to fit. The blueprints that you have, even if they have room measurements, are probably not going to have the dimensions for your appliances. So ask then so that you can start preparing for what you need to buy, what size, make sure everything's going to fit. You do not want to get into a scenario where you've purchased your refrigerator, it's you know three months backlogged, you finally get it, you go to slide it in that space, and it does not fit. So anything like that, you might have questions about, ask, ask, ask. Building your home is such an exciting time. It is also stressful. It is also just you know, impatience here, there, and everywhere. So having an understanding, getting your questions answered, and feeling like you're prepared going in are going to really help kind of ease you into the process. Get that cadence going with whoever your point of contact is. Have that kind of free flow of information and ask questions. It might seem like you're being bothersome, but that's their job. And again, it's your money. So you want to make sure that you are asking your questions, that you're getting your answers that you need, and that you know what's happening with your home. It has definitely been much more difficult now than I would say in the past, just with the uncertainty of timelines. So again, keeping that close contact, having a good understanding, and having an honest understanding going in of what are the pitfalls, what can I expect and when can I expect it? That's all going to be great for your peace of mind. Hopefully something in here was helpful for you. If you're building a home right now, first of all, congratulations. I know it's so exciting. I also understand the kind of stress that goes along with it. So best of luck to you. Hopefully you get in there soon. If you did find something interesting or helpful in here, please go ahead, give this video a like and subscribe. Other than that, I can't wait to see you in the next one. Until next time. Bye.